treasonous actions have taken place in Hexham. Edith, utilizing the power of the blood, has rendered life from Lilion, while the others party away. Celebrating the end of the crusade, Edith removes the remains of her friend. Seeing through the lies of Lilion, Edith had thought for a long time that the great crusade they were undertaking was a mere cover, that the crusade was never about finding Ben, but rather crystallizing Lilion's hold on this world, and her hold on power for that matter. Edith, one of the original three alongside Jonathan, they were the first to receive the gift of the blood, yet were they truly? Or is there another that calls Hexham home that has much older blood flowing through his veins? The ever smart, the ever deadly Jack Dodge. Older than any resident here in Hexham, with a chronological age of 1,858 years, Jack comes from an older bloodstock. Those of the blood of Bevent missed the signs of this ancient sanguifage, pulling strings, plotting. What's a few years to a sanguifage that has lived for centuries? Jack has gone by many names in his life, but Yannick was the first. And while it was Edith that ended the unlife of Lilion, it was Yannick, Jack Dodge, whispers that were more than just words. Through psychic manipulation and a fair bit of social engineering, Jack, Yannick, was able to twist Edith to the will of the old blood. As you see, Yannick is no mere sanguifage. His origin is unlike that of Lelion and many of the others here in Hexham. But as we know, the blood of Bevent isn't the only blood that has flowed here. Yannick's blood flows through this keep too. And of course, Yannick isn't alone here. There is Angelica too, his bride, a sanguifage that has served him for 1,757 years. Their blood has infiltrated the keep and has slowly been working to release the grip Lilion has held on power here. You might think of them as cuckoos invading a nest, allowing others to raise their young. And what a nest the blood of Bevent have built, a keep that is held against countless assaults. But all of this, all the planning, all the careful manipulation could fall apart while Lilion was dead and buried. The blood of Bevent was still strong here in Hexham. Jonathan and his children remain. They will not be so easily swayed. And no doubt, Lilion's presence will be missed before long. Yannick would need to move fast. The relic, the remains of Firefly, that would keep them distracted. Stog, the secular victor of Puao Pausqua. The pigmen had discovered an ancient complex some distance away. Stog believes it contains the information necessary to find the relic known as Firefly. She's willing to send a shuttle, and as an asset of Yannick, she can ensure that that shuttle will not return. So, a simple family outing, a chance for Jonathan and his two young ones to have some time away from the hustle and bustle of Hexham, a chance to bond, and while Jonathan withers Bevent is away, Yannick will make his play, utilizing the gene labs of Lilion and the ancient blood magic of the old blood. Hexham shall change. And so it is that the Bevents pack their bags. Eagerly, the children of Jonathan board the shuttle, looking forward to the adventure. With the Bevents safely whisked away, Moves could be made. The guests of Hexham were the first that would need to be dealt with. After secretly administering sleeping pills to the guests from the Empire of Eternity, Angelica put her blade to work. Their remains would be required for the dark ritual that was to come. Hexham had had their feasts before, but this would be like any as of yet. Yannick prepared the dark platter, weaving his blood magic throughout the flesh. Yannick watches on 
as the colony feasts, aware of the changes that will soon occur. The old blood shall rule in Bevent's stead. They each feast, consuming the tainted flesh, and while they might not know it yet, the Hexham that they have come to call home has already fallen. The frightful changes have already started to take place. The will of Yannick is now absolute. The old blood has won. Yet not all hope is lost. The blood of Bevent lives on. Kia ora, Legionnaires. Rikon here, and welcome back to RimWorld Biotech and to the new chapter of this series, now focusing on these vampire survivors. Yes, we have three colonists and only three, Jonathan, Missy, and Pex. Now, the rest of the world is not aware of them still being alive, and to the best of their knowledge, they're expecting a shuttle to pick them up from here once they are done exploring. Now, they did come here to explore a ruin. However, the ruin is all the way inside the mountain here, so it's going to take them a while to be able to get in there to begin with. Looks like we're going to have to tunnel maybe through this section here. And while the temperature outside is pretty cold, our sanguifages are not yet suffering from that cold. And now is probably a good time to have a closer look at our colonists. Of course, starting with Jonathan Bevent. He is just a crack shot, an absolute crack shot. A one-man army by himself with the ability to turn himself invisible and... Well, he has many other Psy abilities, Farskip being one of them. He could just teleport straight back home. He doesn't have any reason to as of yet, but when he does, well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And then, of course, we have the firstborn of Jonathan and Lilion, Missy. Missy, who is taking after her father with her shooting skill, decent melee there as well. Not a half bad crafter, and she's also got a passion for intellectual. As far as traits go, she's a fast walker, she's a psychopath, and she also has a little bit of wanderlust. So she doesn't like to stick around for too long in one place. So we may be doing a little bit more exploration with Missy. And finally, we have Pex, the youngest at just 10 years old. But my gosh... <laughs> My gosh, Pex is a region leading master in melee. He is a quick sleeper and a brawler. And of course, all three of our colonists here are sanguifages, OG sanguifages, as they are of the blood of Bevent. Now, as they are here for a mission, they are going to try and complete that mission first. So that's going to start with us needing to get into this location here. And I'm looking over here and I don't see any major entry points. Maybe here? We could start off with that. I mean, Jonathan isn't a terrible miner. Uh, Missy ain't great and Pex is no good either. So it looks like this is going to be Jonathan's job. We'll start cracking into there. We'll see what that little opening is. And then foregoing that, we might have to try a few other spots. There is, yeah, another little opening there. So we'll mark that to be mined too. And in the meantime, well, Missy and Pex are just going to have to hang out. They don't have any food as they were not planning on being gone for more than a day. Oh, and of course, there is a strong chance there are some horrific things waiting for us here, as this is a location, an ancient location, that may very well be protected. Alright, Jonathan? Yeah, nothing in there. So, let's try the next spot and <laughs> see if we get lucky. Of course, we do have other caves on this map here, and some old ruins strewn about. Oh, yep, and there ain't nothing there. Okay. What's the strategy going to be then? Well, if we do have to potentially stay here, the less damage that we do to the outside of this facility, the better. So we might just want to try and mine along a path here. I think for now, we'll just keep it to uh, one tile wide. Looking at our world map here, this is where we're located, up on the eastern side of these mountains. Of course, Hexham is still over there, and our 
enemies, yes, our enemies are waiting for us there. As to what the goals of Jonathan and the others are going to be, well, we'll see. <laughs> we will see. And look at that. Maybe that's a good omen. We have had a Granlin pod sprout nearby. It's probably worth us getting that harvested for now. And that may very well give Missy and Pex something to do. Checking on their plant skill. Um, yeah, not great. <laughs> so for now, well, I think they're going to be waiting for Jonathan to crack on into this. And because they are going to be waiting a little while, I think it would make sense for them to try and secure some kind of shelter. And as far as options go, well, we have an old structure here, which we're going to send, let's say, Pex into. Oh, and it does actually look like we're going to have to mine through that anyway. So Missy, let's get you uh, helping out with that. Let's just check out this very small room with Pex. Thank you, Missy. That's going to take a little while. And yeah, it's just a very, very basic room. So let's just put a roof on it for now so that we have some kind of home. Pex, if you'd be so kind. You know what? I feel like we probably are going to have to give you some jobs. Oh, and there's a shaman caravan passing through. Okay. Hmm. Now we might be able to do something about that. Pex, you got a passion for social. We could get you trading, although... What do they have to trade? Really nothing at all. If we could get this cut, we might be able to just sell them the seed. Yeah, let's try that. Oh, and it does look like we're actually going to be able to go inside the structure now, so we'll see what is in here, if anything. Okay, well, we've got flooring, and we should be able to chuck a roof on top of this. Yeah, unroofed, but it does count as inside. So we are going to build a roof across this area here. And Pex is getting to it. Jonathan, get back to that granite. And let's see. Um, okay, we got ourselves a seed. Pex, let's go have a chat with the shamans. And I suppose we can probably get rid of this notification now. Lilion's remains are still in Hexham. And when these three find out, no doubt they'll want to try and get her back. <sighs> but for now, let's focus on this. Pemmican. That'd be nice. We don't have any silver, and I don't know whether or not they'd take the seed. I think we're going to have to chuck that into a stockpile before we can do anything with it. So we'll just create a quick little zone around that, like so, and we'll see what we can do. Yeah, okay, well, we can sell you for 39. And that is actually going to get us an okay amount of pemmican. 19, in actual fact. Sure. Well... Thank you. <laughs> uh, it looks like Jonathan does want to get involved in the construction process over here, and that's okay. Oh, it's just a tiny little bit of work there, eh, lad? We're going to be chucking down some sleeping spots in here, just so that they have somewhere to rest for now. And Jonathan is already in a pretty foul mood. He might not know why exactly. Perhaps it's waves of bad psychic energy, but something feels off. Well, while that pemmican is going to help, Jonathan is getting quite hungry. I think we're going to need some food. So, kids, let's get you over here. And we're going to be putting that sanguific strength to use. Let's take these two ibex out. Pex, quick work there. How about you go and help your sister? Oh, a little bit of an injury on Missy, but nothing too bad. Let's go and coagulate there, just so we don't have any ongoing wounds. And we're going to need to butcher them. After we finish them off, of course. A simple butcher's spot for now will suffice. And while I'm sure they'll hate to do it, we are going to have to put down a campfire. Sanguifages, of course, are rather famously dislike fire. And thank you for finishing them off there, Pex. Let's get some trees chopped down and get that campfire built. Jonathan, <laughs> keep up the good work there, my friend. We did actually have another quest pop up here. An impressive construction. Hmm, let's see. A Praetor from the Empire of Eternity is requesting that we make a structure. You might be able to tell that the Empire of Eternity is hostile towards us right now. Yeah. Well, I think for now, this is going to fall upon death ears. Jonathan has no reason to respond to this request and he's not going to do that. Not until he has completed his mission here. 
And while Missy recovers from her injuries, we've got the first of those trees chopped down. Pex, please tell me you actually got some wood out of that. 22. Okay, that's good. And you know what? That stockpile, that's got to go. <laughs> Let's see if we can't get that campfire built. And oh boy, <laughs> Jonathan is very close to an extreme break here. Just hold on for a little longer there, mate. Pex, thank you. Looks like we... Looks like we won't have a fire after all. Yep, go get the tree. And while Pex is doing that, let's have a look at this other quest that's just popped up here. Howl's Vagabonds. Howl is approaching with a child in tow. They say they were banished from their town due to moral disagreements. Howl begs for permission to stay at Cliffland, which is where we are currently, for 17 days so they can rest and regroup. In return, they offer to work and fight for free. Well, we do need people, don't we, for blood. So, sure, we can accept. Okay, so who, who do we have here? Um, they're baseliners. We've got Veronica Howell, who is good at mining. Wonderful. Well, that's nice. And we have Nikki, a young one, only seven years old, passionate about mining. I see, so we, we could get you helping out too. That does mean we are going to need two more of these beds. Jonathan has just decided to rest his head. We'll chuck down one sleeping spot there and then another one up there. So Howl is going to be able to continue mining throughout what is left of the day. And Nikki, we might be able to get you doing some butchery. Your cooking is not great. Maybe we just leave that to Pex. Oh, and yeah... <laughs> As far as construction goes, Jonathan, we're going to get you to very quickly construct this, just so nothing else is wasted. And of course, Jonathan is also a decent cook, so we could get him doing the butchery. Yeah, looking at everyone else here, mm, Pex, you are passionate. I think it's probably worth us getting you to, to learn, so yeah, you can do some butchery. Let's make that your number one priority in actual fact. And then we'll get you cooking afterwards. A little bit of food poisoning never, well, yeah, actually it did, it did kill, it's killed many people. <laughs> oh, and looking back on the side here. Oh, oh, a gift. Well, okay, we'll, we'll get to a few of these things. <laughs> Firstly, I was going to say that of course, Edith was Lillian's heir. As her very good friend, Lillian nominated her to receive well, her titles upon her passing, and Edith has received those titles. Perhaps it was just one more reason, lumped on top of many, that caused her to choose the path that she did. <sighs> right, yes, but first of all, that is quite a gift. Three Little World Medicine. That is a very nice gift, much appreciated, and that's something that we can use to maybe trade with others for more going forwards. But let's deal with that rage. Jonathan's... M <laughs> Jonathan... Okay, well I guess this is it. This is how he finds out. And you know what? I think it makes sense. They had to find out some way. And I don't think Jonathan found out from Howl. I think he feels it in his blood. He knows. Perhaps there was still just a little bit of Lillian hanging on. But now that's gone. And Jonathan... Oh, Jonathan, really? Can we do something about this? Maybe. Missy would have to try and imprison him. Or Pex. I mean, he's got a pretty good chance to try and arrest him. We are going to need somewhere to use as a... Well, a temporary prison. We're going to say that is this spot right here. That's for prisoners. Pex, you are actually out at the moment. Oh, if we're quick, just maybe. It is going to be down to the wire. Howl, oh boy. Um, yeah, I am thinking maybe not. Pix, come on. Okay, all right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna long jump right to there. Pix, come on. <laughs> Can you stop your dad in time? Okay, try and rest, Jonathan. There we go. There we go. How, how are you looking? Oh, you've got hypothermia and many other wounds. Um, 
We could try and just let him go now and he might be all right. Let's see. I think, I think that's going to work. We need to go and coagulate Howl. Prisoner Jonathan is escaping. Uh, no, he's not. No, he's not. Um, there we go. All right. Let's allow those. And Jonathan, well, I mean, we, we can, we can just release you. So let's say release and Pex, well, I guess we have to capture him to release him. Pex, do what you need to do. Come on. There we go. There we go. Arrest him and then release him. Missy, thank you for the rescue. And it looks like Nikki is heading on down here to also dig at the granite. Very appreciated, Nikki. Don't mind your mum. Is that your mum? I think I think that might be your mum. Oh no, just fr just friend. Uh, okay. Are you guys not related at all? Nope. Just a just a kid. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, okay. Now that we've got Jonathan kind of sleeping that off, are we able to just release him? Okay. We, we can we can give it a go, can't we? Pex, let's see. Are you going to behave, Jonathan? Seemingly. Yay, maybe. He doesn't have catharsis because, um, well, he wasn't able to, to kill. Mm. How? let's just have you stay nice and warm in here. Oh boy. And it does look like Pex is going to be doing his first little batch of butchery. And Jonathan, I, I feel like it's probably worth you trying to take over. <laughs> take over the mining? Or maybe not. Oh, it's just a local buffalo. Well, one buffalo is okay. Pex, <laughs> look, I know you've been doing a lot. I know you have, but we'll see. We might need you here. Uh, let's just go and equip that rifle there, Jonathan. Thank you. Oh, and it does look like Jonathan might be able to intervene first, or who knows? It might be going... Oh, yeah, it's going for Jonathan. Well, that's its mistake. Jonathan, let's get you set up here just beside the tree. You should be able to make pretty quick work of this muffalo. There we are. And let's mark that to be finished off. Jonathan, do whatever you want to. Ah, and Pex is hiding in his room. I, I don't blame you. And, oh, raw meat? I mean, you've eaten worse things. Ah, okay. Well, <laughs> the first of our enemies have arrived. The Poison Gang. There's only four of them right now. Mila, Rose, Whip, and Garnet. They're armed, they're dangerous, and while Peck is not really ready to fight, Jonathan, we're going to need you to take care of this problem for us. And of course, this is something he should have absolutely no problem with whatsoever. And this will actually make him happier. Much, much happier. The first shot tears through the night, and into Garnet. Jonathan, let's try and stop Garnet from getting away. It looks like she's trying to flee. Yeah, we don't want that. Let's jump on over here for now. And let's see if we can actually get a shot off on her before she can make it to the edge of the map. Oh, they're all taking off. Okay, that's Garnet down. Let's go for Mila next. It looks like Whip is going to be able to get away. A headshot is definitely gonna slow her down. Come on, there we go. Okay, so obviously, first of all, we are going to be able to get blood, which is great, but we're also going to be able to get flesh from them too. Their, um, you know, preferred form of food. We wanna make sure that everyone has as much as they can in the way of food. Oh, and we'll be taking as many of these cloves as we can. Oh, waster waste pack retaliation. Juliet Rice of the Poison Gang claims that your reckless off-map dumping of toxic waste has harmed her faction. That's kind of because we have left Hexham behind. So they see that as a, um, a slight on them. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, um, we're going to have a, a little bit of a, a spill down there. I suppose we could always move it to other locations. Like if we just go down here, we create a dumping zone. We're going to dump toxic waste in here. Okay, good. And it looks like it's automatically selected. Nice. Missy is currently heading on over to get some hemogen from our downed foes here. Oh, and Jonathan, let's actually make sure that we finish them off as well. We want each of them to do it if we can, because it'll, well, it'll make them happy. There we go. Look at that. 
a little bit of a benefit, which we're going to be able to use to keep our moods up too. Uh, and Jonathan's gone berserk. Dangerous. Very dangerous. He's watching for targets right now. We're just going to leave him down here and we're going to make sure that no one else uh, kind of leaves this area just for the moment. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll stay safe. It's okay. We will get through this. Oh, Nikki. Um, uh, oh dear. Oh dear. That is a, that is a problem. Will he chase them? Probably. Okay, here's what you're going to do, kid. We're just going to kind of go a little like this. Oh boy. Oh boy, that's bad. That's, that's, uh, that's very bad. You have a angry, psychopathic sanguophage chasing you down and there ain't too much that we can do other than maybe just try and outpace him. Okay, Pex has been successfully calmed down by Missy. Good job, Missy. Maybe you can try and calm down your dad. No, no, doesn't seem to be an option. Okay, that's fine. Just, just keep on running, kid. Keep on running. <laughs> Oh dear, and we've just got Pex daydreaming outside, melee attacking Nikki. Just, 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 Jonathan, come on, just, uh, just calm down. Okay, watching for targets. That's, that's better. Just, everyone, oh no, melee attacking Pex. Yeah, this is a, this is a blood rage. Oh, and Pex is fleeing. That's good, that's good. Run, run. Who would have thought that Jonathan was going to be the major enemy here? And well, it is only for now. Let's just... You, you're going to head down this way as well? I, I think you are. Well, we're ready. Okay, alright. Pex, you're going to have to try and arrest again. Yeah, no, we're not going to execute. Just... <sighs> oh. Th yeah, there is no... There is no arresting here. Well, then. Pex. Missy. You just have to defend yourselves. Okay. Okay, all right. They're both engaging Jonathan. Do not kill him. Okay, there we go. Jonathan's berserk rage has come to an end. All right, let's expend a little bit of that blood there. And, uh, oh, Pex is all out of blood. Unfortunate. Hey, Nikki, would you mind? Okay, yeah, you, yeah, you would mind. How? Okay, okay, yeah, no. <laughs> That, that, that ain't gonna work. All right, um, Missy, let's rescue Jonathan for now. Okay. Oh, and she's trying to cheer him up. Okay, well, that's nice. Pex, how are your injuries? They're not bad. They, well, I, I say that. He almost lost his ear. Um, <laughs> very nearly lost his ear. Okay, okay. Yikes. Let's forbid the little world medicine for now, just so that no one accidentally uses it. Oh, and Jonathan is back up on his feet. Okay, all right. Can you come and treat your kid? Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. And we'll also get you doing the same to Missy. Well, i got to say, uh, this is not how I was expecting things to go right off the bat. But considering how bad their situation is, kind of makes sense. And the hunger is setting in. Pex, um, sorry, buddy. We don't have time for nature running. We need your cooking. Oh. Oh, 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 okay. Hi. Uh, pollution retaliation. More of the poison gang. <laughs> Look, it wasn't us. It was Hexham. How many times do I have to tell you? I mean, it's just more people, right? It's more bodies. It's more blood. That's good. Jonathan. Let's see. I think we've got two different lots. Okay. Yeah, we got blur up the top here, but the major group, they're down here. So Jonathan, while you are actually quite injured and you're feeling super depressed, we need you to defend your family here. Nikki, let's not go that way, hey? Let's just head back here. Pex, Missy, I want the two of you taking out Blur. You know what, at this rate, it might actually be Jonathan, depending on where Blur is going. Yeah, Jonathan, let's just get you holding there for now. And Nikki, let's get you uh, hiding. Oh, wow, yeah, that was quick. Okay, Missy, Pex, let's get you getting that blood. And Jonathan, stand firm, stand ready. The enemy is upon us. Okay. Well, looks like they're going to be chucking grenades in your general direction, so ideally, you'll get some of those shots hitting. He is in a considerable amount of pain right now. 
which will be affecting the shot. Oh, but Bella Rose is down. Nikki, let's get you behind that proper cover there. Looks like Missy has made it over towards Burr and the Poison Gang are fleeing. Corsi is the last one there. It looks like Corsi will get away unless, of course, Jonathan, let's get you long jumping after her. While he isn't very fast right now, he can still jump so damn far. Let's see, a little bit further, my friend. That should do it. Line up your shot. Do what you need to do. Excellent. Okay, well, we're gonna be feasting. Nikki, let's make sure that we take the equipment off of each of these downed foes. As Pex makes his way on over here, Pex, yeah, just have all the blood you need. Oh, that's blur dealt with. Let's go feed on Bella Rose. Jonathan will take the equipment before we drink. Are we the good guys? Well, no, it's, we're definitely not the good guys. But are we the baddest of the bad guys? Maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> My gosh, maybe, just maybe, they'll have a chance to rest? Who knows? Uh, you know what, Jonathan, there is no rest for you. We need to get through to this vault. Or maybe we don't, maybe we don't, maybe that's just gonna be a terrible thing, but we won't know until we get that door open. Well, you know what? Jonathan is heading back to relax socially and I'm not going to say no. Any chance we can get to improve <laughs> well-being, uh, we got to take it. And actually, going off of that, if we can do any kind of rituals at all, we should. And they're not going to be good quality, but it looks like we can do a role change and a call to the sire. We'll do so after Jonathan's had a little bit of time just hanging out by the fire. <laughs> the very first ritual we are going to perform here is, uh, th thank you, thank you, Jonathan, <laughs> is naming Jonathan the Sanguinator, who is our spiritual leader. And while, yes, Jonathan is going to become the keeper of the blood, the true leader of this place, right now we need a <laughs> Sanguinator more. A successful role change. Good job. Pex, you are doing a fantastic job there, my lads. Cooking up a storm, and wow, you're pretty happy right now. Why? I mean, catharsis, okay, yeah. And some people died, and you know what? You're very passionate about cooking. Good for you. Oh, and of course, we should make sure that we are allowing our people to be butchered here as well. Because, you know, vampires, we're cannibals. Hey, Howl is back up on her feet. Wonderful. Let's get you tagging out, Jonathan. And let's get into this mountain. Oh yes, and while Jonathan might have a prestige marine helmet on, he doesn't have any other armor. <sighs> you know what, while I like your enthusiasm, Howl, you are very slow at mining. And you're not in a good mood as well, so Jonathan, I'm going to get you to tag Howl out. <laughs> there we go. Much faster. <laughs> Oh, it looks like Randy is being at least a little bit kind to us. We've got some apparel. What kind? Oh, a fur shirt. Oh, and swings and roundabouts. We've got some food poisoning. Howl is uh, is down. Uh, Nikki, if you'd be so kind, rescue your uh, adopted mother. Thank you. Pex isn't the best chef yet. He'll get there. And speaking of getting there, we've finally done it. One last little bit to chip away, Jonathan. And there we go. We have access, finally. And it's not going to be Jonathan that's going to be going in. It is going to be Pix. So let's get you moving up here. And you know what, Missy, we're going to get you down here too. You are wearing marine armor after all. And you, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we might need it. I really have no idea what to expect here. But this was a mission in which we needed to send quite a few people in to, um, you know, <laughs> deal with whatever might be here so we will go through cautiously we've actually found the terminals the terminals are still active i didn't know whether or not they would be okay you two let's just go through very slowly okay i mean so far so good this is this is quite the place there's just a lot to it we should be able to convert this into something of a home but we really want to make sure that there is uh, no one else home, first of all. Ooh, animal pulses and a psychic soother as well. Okay, well, 
<laughs> this has been rather good so far. And even better. Okay, let's crack that open. We have some components. Nice. Deeper in we go. And that's where we stop. That's where we stop. That's where we close the door. And we just forbid it. Um, yeah. That's a no door. No, Nikki. Nikki, you don't go in there. You don't go in there, okay? Let's just clear the rest of the place, but okay. Oh, wow. We've got a nice big courtyard here as well. It does look like it goes on further. We'll explore that way. But that is a lot of mechanoids. A lot of mechanoids for three sanguifages to deal with. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> many. I, I, I'm loving how many rooms we've got here, though. We've, we've got a base. We have a base already built for us. Okay. But we're going to have to fight for it. Uh, and you know what? We might be able to get them to fight each other. Insects versus mechanoids. <laughs> That, that'll be the plan, I think. Uh, let's clear the rest of this place, though. Okay, all right, we don't want fires, so let's just leave that for now, and we'll go that way. Okay. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, I, I'm very surprised by how big this is. It's a bit of a fixer-upper, but, you know, uh, I like it. I like it. Okay, you two, let's get you out of here. Okay. All right, I just saw one of them wake up. Easy does it. Easy does it. Okay, okay. And look, we can even call down some goodies from upon high. But that, Legionnaires, will be in the next episode. I'd like to thank you all for joining me for this, the next chapter of our Sanguithic tale. It is one of betrayal and a story of survival. It is here that we will continue that survival story, where we will build up our strength, and then we shall take that strength back to the walls of Hexham. Lilion has not been forgotten, nor has the betrayal. Life has just got a lot harder for the Bevents. But with the blood of Lilion flowing through them, I have high hopes. Legionnaires, I ask you if you enjoyed today's episode, and if you're looking forward to this new chapter of RimWorld, I ask you to please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. As for now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned.